also known as the Oceanpreneur. And with Ocean Nomad TV, I aim to encourage you to go on ocean adventures and to make better decisions for a healthier ocean. <laughs> In this episode, I will talk you through the zero waste nomad kit I'm traveling with. And um, yeah, hopefully you get some useful ideas how you can minimize your impact on the ocean when you're traveling. Enjoy! We are um, sitting here in the island of Lipari on a beautiful anchorage. We woke up here only boats here. We just drafted up together with the boat of Paula. So we are organizing a trip together. Getting all the pirates involved in the ocean nomad lifestyle. So what I find very important during this kind of sailing trips to do to the best we can to uh, reduce our impact on the environment. So in this video, I'd like to show you a few things I travel with and a few items we can use um, to contribute to a healthier ocean. So I have my zero waste nomad kit here. I'm just going to show you a few of these you can maybe incorporate in your sailing life, in your travel life, in your nomad life. Simple ideas, but um, it works. So first of all, I always, always, always travel with a water bottle. In most of the places in Europe, you can either drink the water from the tap or they have places in the street where you can fill it. On boats, this is not always the case. Um, so what you can do, well, you can either buy the bigger, bigger bottles of, uh, of water. What we do on this boat, we actually have a water filter. I brought it. It's a water filter we can use with multiple crew, crew members. So we can actually use the water from the tank as drinking water. So I will show you. I spent hours of research on the internet searching for solutions like this. And this is the one I'm testing this trip. Woo. Hold on. <coughs> Get it out. All right, it's this one. So this, one, this, this end we put in the dirty water. This end we put in the bottle. And we just pump and clean water comes out. So. Um, yeah, we only, uh, we only bought a few bottles in case of emergency, but uh, overall this week we've been able to save the environment from hundreds of plastic water bottles to, um, to drink. So this is one tool. You also have these kind of water filters with straws or with, uh, in water bottles, so those are more, a bit more travel friendly individual solutions. Um, but I wanted to cater for the whole crew. So um, I bought this one. It's still, this one is still light. It's, it's maybe half, half a kilo, something like that. What else I travel with? Okay, so I have my bamboo toothbrush. Um, <coughs> and my self-made self -made toothpaste. I make my own toothpaste. Depending on what I have, I, I make it with. My favorite recipe is just coconut oil, baking soda, 
a few drops of some essential oil if I have access to it. And sometimes I also add some activated charcoal. Try it, you will have the cleanest teeth ever. And what's also a really good rinse for your mouth is just seawater. Every morning I dive in, I gorgle with a bit of seawater and um, I smell like flowers. Um, what else? So soap, I travel with a block of soap, which I basically use to wash my hair, myself. Block of soap. I also wash my clothes with it, do the dishes with it, basically everyone I can, I can do with this. And I actually started using less of all these cosmetics uh, in general. Because um, a lot of these a lot of these cosmetics you find in the in the shops, they have sub substances harmful for the ocean. And if it's harmful for the ocean, what does it do for us? I don't know. Um, but this is an ocean-friendly solution. Um, also, I travel with a bit of this. It's the Dr. Bronner's soap. It's like an 80-in-1 multi-use soap. So this one is also more friendly to share with other people for washing your hair, for washing your clothes, for doing the dishes, for washing the boats. Um, natural stuff. Another thing I'm very excited to show you is the straws. I, um, I travel with a bunch of bamboo straws. I make them myself. My, um, my parents, they grow a big bamboo tree in their garden and my dad, he cuts it and he throws it away. So um, I said, hold on, we can make something out of this. So we just cut the branches, dry it, sand it, sand it a bit and you have a straw. It's, uh, it's very simple and it's not necessarily that I use a lot of straws, but generally in the Mediterranean and also in the Caribbean, Asia, if you show up at a local bar or restaurant, many of the drinks are automatically come with a straw. And if you already proactively show up with your own straw, you're able to reduce your straw footprint. And also it helps to create a conversation with the local, like, oh yeah, this could this could work too, this could be a solution too. So I travel with these and I, uh, I give them away if you uh, come across me and my uh, nomad life. So that's that one. Sun cream. So I travel with some mineral based sun cream, not a uh, chemical based sun cream. And the difference is the chemical based sun cream, it's the sun cream you see in most of the, the touristy shops and in the supermarkets. You absorb the, the sun rays. The mineral-based sun cream, they reflect. This one has only natural ingredients and it basically reflects the sun. So it's a little bit more white, but you can, you can rub it. It's full with healthy oils, good for your skin, and it doesn't have any harmful ingredients for the ocean, which the general sun creams, they have. There's even countries these days that already prohibited um, tourists from using sun cream. I think it's Palau and Hawaii. Uh, you're not allowed to use it anymore. And if it does, if it's this harmful for the ocean, also consider what what does it do to to us? Sun cream. You have you have lots of mineral-based sun cream on the market. Usually it's the smaller brands. So you kind of gotta find in your in your own country or where you are at who is making this or who is selling this. Um, what else? I travel with some produce nets. So if you go to the local markets. You don't have to grab the plastic bags, especially in the supermarket. In some countries, you always, you have to get a bag. They sometimes don't allow you to even not have a bag. So if you, if you go with your own bags, you can save some, uh, save some plastic bags. It weighs nothing. And it's also useful if you're not shopping to use them for your laundry or to have them as travel organizers. So I travel with that. Um, what else do I have? Ah, yeah, I travel with this thingy. You know the foil, the plastic foil, film foil, it's, it's called, I think, to wrap around food or to wrap around your sandwich, to cover things. Um, I found this, um, this thingy, I found very helpful. You just put your sandwich and you do it like this and you have a takeaway sandwich. So, super simple and useful and you don't have to grab a sandwich bag and another one and another one. Um, what else? Ah, I travel with um, toothpicks. I like to pick my tooth and also in many countries these toothpicks they are all individually wrapped in plastic. It's a bit ridiculous so travel with that. 
um, tea. I'm an absolute tea freak, so I also travel with my own tea bag and my own loose tea. I just reuse it, reuse it, and I don't have to buy the teas from the shop that also in many countries are individually wrapped in plastic bags. So I travel with that. Um, what else do I have? This is another thing I discovered on the internet. It's also a water filter. And sometimes you have that with chloride, sometimes you have that with iodine. But this one is 100% is natural mineral based water filtration drops. I'm testing them out and um, yeah, I've been able to drink, to drink the water uh, as well. So you add a few drops, you wait an hour and you have drinking water too. Another solution to, uh, to access clean drinking water. So yeah, I travel also with this bag. Um, another thing I travel with, which I don't have here, like I have a diving mask and I travel with the box and the box I use for takeaway stuff. So if I go for dinner somewhere or lunch and I have food leftovers, I just take it in that because I don't want to throw away food and I don't want to get like the styrofoam boxes or the other boxes you sometimes get, which you then throw away and there is no way, we know now. So every piece of plastic ever made is still out there somewhere. So even if we think we dispose it or throw it away, it's still there. And that's why it's important to do our bit, do what we can. With items like this, um, we can reduce our, <coughs> our footprint. I think this is what I... We have another... So I, my mom made this. It's, um, I put my, uh, my business cards in. I also have one for my passport. And this is a piece of the storm jib we cut apart on the last Atlantic crossing. We use it to patch the mainsail, which broke down. Um, travel with that. Yeah, that's it. And I also like to introduce you to someone now. We have on our boat, we have Goge, who is also a sailor, a very sustainably minded sailor. He has been boat hitchhiking in different parts of the world. And he also uh, has some tools he travel with. So. Here's Gog, hè? <laughs> Hi. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, so what's, um, what are you traveling with? Well, um, I, when, I, when I started sailing, I started my sailing through a beautiful project uh, called the Alternative Sailing Community. And amongst other things, uh, living an alternative lifestyle on boats, we always aim for sustainability. And so my combination with the sailing world and the ocean has always been a sustainable way. And my mind was always uh, pointing that way. So I had a couple of tools with me and last year I developed a project called Sailing versus Plastic. And I got too busy with the sailing part of the, the project and too less busy with the development and the video and the editing. Yeah. But I did learn a lot from that and I raised awareness for, for a good amount of people about the, the plastic issue in our oceans. and. What I like the most is that I could interact with local people. So I went to Canary Islands, uh, South Africa, and also in the Gambia, and I interacted with local activists or artists or organizations that were working with plastic. And so uh, I have sometimes some things with me, depending on the, on the trip. On this one, um, I have the little things that I've implemented in my life, like also like yours, the bamboo toothbrush, uh, natural toothpaste. Everywhere I go, I, I aim to buy one, depending on the countries, it's easier or, or harder to find more friendlier solutions. Um, the, 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 the other end is actually really good. It's all uh, carbon and paper wrapping, and it's basically with natural materials, and it helps wonders for when you cannot access the shower for a couple of days. And also the reusable bag. This nice. is from our friend on board, mm. Anna. Very nice and organic and made. And this little thing is made actually from the recycling woman, woman of the Gambia. Gambia is the smallest country in Africa and the first country that uh, banned totally plastic bags. And sh long story short, they basically banned it because the goats and the, uh, and the ships were dying in the streets. Wow. And so this woman, I sat to see uh, in the end of the 90s, she started this organization to empower women to have a different a traditional life like the one they had in, in they have in the times and they empower women to use their skills and their creativity with recycling materials to create beautiful items and sell them and try to make a living out of it. So they made this little plastic wallet. Nice. And this is made out of plastic bags. So it's a weave it's plastic beautiful, bags. Huh? And they make everything. They make purses, they use uh, recycled car tires, recycled bicycle tires and it's beautiful. It's an amazing project and the women are the most inspiring group I have met definitely on the trip. 
And then the last tip I have for you is uh, something I learned in my beginning of my sailing. It's a good way of um, washing up your dirty pants uh, and also washing up yourself. Everything that needs to scrub yourself, a pants or anything. So for pants, imagine you fry something really oily and then you need to clean up that little oily parts and everything you use will get really oily. Or you can use you reuse coffee grinds. Every coffee grind you have used for your coffee in the morning, don't throw it away. And then you just basically grab it, which is like this, and then you put it in your pan, and then you scrub the oil with your pan. The oil gets sucked into the coffee grinds, and then you can throw that yeah. in your compost. Such a good tip. I tried it. Uh, I tried it yesterday for the pans, but also for myself, and it's it's great. Works. It's yeah. We always have coffee, and we always yeah. throw the coffee grinds. It's a really great tool. So, really uh, good tip. Yeah. I think so I yeah, that. some some things we have to like. Prepare in advance, research in advance, buy in advance, but also we don't always have the accessibility as ocean nomads to find a shop where you can find these things. So a lot of it is preparation, but also a lot of it is being in, 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 inventive, inventful, creative. creative. Inventful. Yes. So what's also um, working, for example, for deodorant using baking soda. You can find that almost everywhere. It works great also for cleaning. Vinegar also works great for cleaning, or just baking soda for toothpaste. It works. It works really, really well. Yeah. So yeah, we have to rethink the way we do things, research, reduce, reuse, recycle, and upcycle. And upcycle, exactly. Try to make the things as circular as we can, and uh, if we all do our bit, all together, we can make a big uh, wave of change. Nice. Do you have anything more to add? No, super happy to be here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>